Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. So today's episode is going to be focused on two topics. We're going to talk about fishing later in the episode, because I, w I said I was going to talk about it um, also later in yesterday's episode. Maybe a bit of deja vu for you, because we opened yesterday's episode uh, starting this in, in this exact same place. But we're also going to talk a little bit more concentratedly about cooking, because I do need to cook a few things, and I want to just kind of sit here and and muse on a few things that have come up in the comments, as well as just talk about some basics of of how to use this here cooking device or other cooking devices you may find out in the world. Besides, it's getting dark and uh, some, some light would be nice. So we're going to go ahead and start a fire. I have uh, just wood matches on me. I don't have a lantern yet, by the way, which is odd for this point in a Voyager playthrough, but I've been so focused on showing you specific things that I haven't really scavenged as much as I normally would. Um... I know I've actually scavenged a lot. I've, I've, I've definitely been focused on scavenging in terms of like what I've talked about, but when you really watch a long dark playthrough of someone who's focused on just playing and not teaching while they play, uh, you're going to be all over the place. And if you're not, then you really should be. And we'll talk more about starting strategies that are, that are more detailed uh, probably once we pass these first five episodes. But anyway, that's another topic for, again, another day. Let's go ahead and uh, start the fire. We've got wood matches. I've got bunches of cattail heads as well as just tinder plugs. I need to, oh yeah, I need to work on this newsprint so I can convert it to Tinder. And I've got uh, fuel, I've got different kinds of books, I've got a fire log and sticks. Okay, that's good by me. I'm going to use, you know what, let me just use one of my accelerants so that this happens nice and fast. If I weren't playing survival school, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did, Mark. Thanks, appreciate that commentary. Uh, if we weren't playing survival school, I probably wouldn't have used that accelerant, but just for the sake of... Um, getting this going. I'm also adding that fire log to the fire, which is, again, kind of for the purpose of teaching. Let's start by cooking this herbal tea, because this is a point that I want to make about cooking that I don't think I made uh, very pointedly before. Right now, our herbal tea uh, food item, this, this contains five tea packets. Most, I think, actually every time that you pick up a coffee tin or an herbal tea food item, in the game, unless it's an actual cup that you find in the world. Notice, by the way, we saw a skill indicator here. I don't know how much I've talked about that yet. Whenever you see one of the indicators pop up on the right-hand side, that indicates skill progress for that skill. And then when you, if, you're, if your cooking skill, for instance, goes up while you are cooking, and you finish cooking and go away from the cooking screen, you'll actually see the, uh, the, the notification that you've gotten the next level. So when I say if your cooking skill goes up, I mean if your skill level goes up. If you go from level 1 to 2. My cooking skill is going up every single time here. But when you actually level up, that's what I mean to say. So I actually feel like, was that 4 or... This has got to be 5. There we go. And I'll go ahead and make the rosehip tea as well. I mentioned in the last episode that this does have caloric value. Which has become kind of a joke phrase on my channel. Uh, with <laughs> me and at least a few people. But uh, it does uh, feed you a little bit, which is nice. And we did use up some water doing that, so I want to go ahead and use what's left of this fire. Again, I've got a fire. I want to use it. That's just the way things work. You don't want to start a fire. For instance, you know, a fire that has three hours on it and only use an hour of it and then just let it sit. There's got to be something you can... Oh, I don't think we finished boiling that water. No, we didn't. I was not... I was talking and not paying attention to how much time I had left on the fire. All right, well, tell you what, I'm not going to worry about that, that at the moment. I can, well, yes, I am, aren't I? I am going to worry about that. I don't have water purification tablets, so I'd have to start another fire. That's actually kind of annoying. All right, well, fine. Not going to use accelerant. Oh, I have lamp oil. And I don't have a lantern yet. I take that back, I will use accelerant. Nice. So, this is another do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do moment, unfortunately. That, that was simply because I was talking and I didn't realize I was out of time on the fire. But make sure you keep your fire going before that happens so you don't waste a match like I just wasted a match. Um, and other things for that matter. I wasted some tinder. So just be, be aware of that. Let's go ahead and add some stuff. This torch, I think, is almost completely burned out. I'm going to go ahead and put that back in the fire. Torches will add to the length of the fire uh, proportionate to how much is left on the torch. FYI, if you didn't know that. So anyway, let's boil the water. Another thing I wanted to bring up about cooking is based on a question that I got in the comments. A very, very good question uh, that I wanted to bring up. 
someone asked me, can you, and by the way, since this is probably still not hot, hold that thought. I'll come back to that question in just a second. See, these are all cold items. But when you have a fire, you can also heat these items over the fire. You can heat food, you can heat drinks, and drinking them when hot, you have to find the hot one. There we go. Doesn't change anything about the, the value of the drink, but it will do this for you. You get the warming up benefit, which actually gives you, as you can see there, there's a boost now to my warmth. Now, I didn't need it, but in situations where you're hypothermic, that can really help. Uh, it can also help give you a little bit of a buff when it's really cold. So you can drink a hot drink when you are getting ready to go outside in some cold weather and actually kind of be okay for the night, whereas otherwise you might have been in a bit of a pickle. But you also, so here's one thing I want to point out about cooking, and I will get back to the question I was about to bring up in just a second, because I realized I wanted to talk about this first. <laughs> So I'm all I'm completely all over the place, I know. But notice that our condition on the tea is not 23%, it's 73%. Every time you cook something in the lawn dark, its condition will go up. Again, kind of proportionate to how much the starting condition is. So if you have a very low condition item, it's not like you can take a low condition item from 1% condition, like raw meat, to 90% food. But we had 25% tea, and that became 73%. Uh, or tea bags, and that became 73% tea. So cooking things actually does help raise the condition. So if you have rancid meat that doesn't look like you'll ever be able to eat it, cook it, you might actually still be able to get something out of it. You still just want to be careful about the condition of the item. So these embers are still burning. By the way, that does mean as long as they're going, they're still putting out heat, and it means I can throw something on them and the fire will start back. Good times. All right, so I've got 600 calories on me, and I want to have a little bit more because I want to make sure I get through the night. So tell you what, let's eat a tin of sardines. The question that came up that I thought was really, really good, it's a very simple question. Does cooking over a hot fire lead to faster cooking times? The answer to that question is no with a giant asterisk by it. Because no, you, you, no matter how hot the fire is, it'll take the same amount of time in the current version of the game to cook something. But Raphael has openly talked about how a future update of the Lone Dark might include more involved cooking. What that means is that, hang on, I'll, I'll actually show you now that we have daylight, and then we'll go out and we'll do some fishing. What that means is that you would be able to actually pick up this skillet and maybe, maybe even like move something around in the skillet you know, to like properly cook it. That'd be really detailed. But what he's actually talked about is you'd be able to put something down in the skillet. You would see a physical item there that would be smoking and you could walk away from the fire while it was cooking. So cooking would become more of a realistic involved, like let me control the temperature. Let me make sure that, um, I, I mean, I imagine cooking uh, temperature control would be involved. I don't think they mentioned that overtly, but uh, they, they do have in their plans for future development of the Lone Dark a, an improved cooking um, system. So just be aware of that. The answer to your question right now is no. One temperature cooks everything the same way, or different different cook temperatures you know, cook everything the same way regardless. But in the future, it probably will get more realistic. Okay, so we don't have that much food in our bellies, but that's okay. I have, let's see, how many calories? 764? Let's see if we can go outside and do a little fishing. One thing that occurs to me though, hang on, I've got a pry bar. Okay, I'll explain why I was looking for that in just a second. Weather sounds nice. I actually don't hear even a little bit of wind outside, so it could be good out here. Let's see how this looks. Oh, it's foggy, but that's okay. We also just need to head back out here. Last time we were here, a wolf kind of chased me off and I wasn't done exploring this outer area. So I've mentioned that I still need something for my hands. We talked about frostbite in the last episode, and just to make sure I was very clear about uh, some of the stuff that I said about frostbite. Frostbite can occur on any part of your body that is not covered, okay? So, any part, but it can also occur on parts of your body that have frozen clothing, right? So if you, if you allow your, if basically if you, have the, if you allow the elements to seep through your clothing, if your clothing gets wet and then freezes, you'll still get frostbite on any part of your body with a frozen clothing item. And then beyond that, 
Another thing that can occur that came up in the comments, and I really, really appreciate the person who brought this up, is that sometimes you can still catch frostbite even when you're indoors if the temperature is not warm enough. Most places when you go indoors, you can find a bed and you can... The temperature boost that you get from the bed, which I haven't shown you that explicitly, I don't think, but every bed gives you like a, a certain temperature bonus. It's usually about 9 degrees Fahrenheit, not sure how much it is in Celsius, but um, you can usually get in the bed and overcome any kind of, you know what, let's finish exploring the outer cabins because we do need to find a lantern and I feel like I might find one if I look around for a second. So anytime you have any kind of um, bed, you'll get a warmth bonus. But sometimes you find yourself in a situation where you sleep indoors and guess what? The bonus actually isn't that, it, it isn't enough. Any bonus that you get from where you're sleeping, or maybe you don't have a bonus from where you're sleeping, the bedroll, the bed you're sleeping in, the, the truck you're sleeping in, the, the whatever it might be, it actually might not be warm enough. So be mindful of how hot it is when you, of, of how warm it is really when you sleep, because if you're not careful, you can still catch afflictions related to the cold while you rest. Be very, very mindful of that. And I appreciate the commenter who pointed that out. So again, I've been in this cabin, I think, and I've fully scavenged it. So there are some wolves over to the left. You probably noticed them while I was talking. Now that I'm actually kind of a little bit more in control of... Let's talk a little bit about dancing with wolves here. Now that I'm a little bit more in control of this encounter, we're going to get really close to this wolf's detection range so that we can just kind of have a shared experience of, well, how close can you get to these bad boys? First of all, the detection range on wildlife is the same across all difficulties in the Lawn Dark, but it can be changed in the custom settings. So it's possible to get close enough to a wolf to, um, or to get to get close enough to a wolf, uh, or I'm, I'm phrasing this completely wrong. It's possible to change the setting uh, that of you know the the distance at which a wolf will detect you it's also possible to change the set the distance at which a wolf will pick up on the scent of an item that you're carrying so you saw how far away i was a moment ago from that wolf there that's generally about as far as you want to be when they're about that big on your screen if i were to get say he, he turned around so you can see me i backed off really quickly if I were to step maybe to the edge of the ice there, where the last, of, or not really the edge of the ice, but the edge of the snow, where I, I go, that, go past that last little mound of snow in the middle of the screen, the wolf would detect me. He would come right towards me. One thing you can do to decrease the likelihood of detection is you can crouch. This reduces the radius instantly at which a wolf will detect you, or a deer will detect you. So it does allow you to sneak up on an animal or to sneak past an animal. And a lot of the time in my Against All Odds series on the channel, you, you've, you'll see me using crouching or just using distance and practice to get around wolves that I'm trying to, uh, that I'm trying not to piss off, which is what I'm doing right now. So we'll talk about, I'm going to raid these cabins and then we'll find a, a safe spot. I'm, I could have gone around the back of this rock, but I wanted to show you the detection range stuff. If I were to stand up right now, that wolf would turn and come for me. Actually, I'll show you. Oh, wow. Actually, he's not. I'm just outside of his range. But it would just be a couple of steps. So again, learning that, there's there's no real... I don't know that there's a real distance measurement to it that you could use uh, more reliably. It's just kind of something you have to learn to, f to feel out intuitively. As far as how far you are from the wolf. It's based on experience. It's based on how things look typically for you when you do get detected. Got some firewood there. That was nice. All right, so there's three standing cabins here. We're going to find lots of stuff. Let's scavenge for a moment. I think I can use this. All right, I've got a worn cotton toque. We're not going to need that. Tomato soup, another book, stack of papers, another book, another book, lots of stuff. Notice these brooms can be broken down if you have a hatchet. I don't have a hatchet, so we're not going to rig it down. Because we can't. But that's okay. We've got a pry bar, and that's all I need to fish. Well, it's more... I, I, need a, I need fishing tackle, too, but I made fishing tackle in the previous episode from the crafting menu. Oh, it's going to do its loading thing. Give it a second. Actually, I'll have to come back to that moment, too, in the, um, in the recording and make sure that uh, 
that my current that my new settings that I'm using are really working properly. Hang on. All right, made a note of that timestamp because that's the kind of thing that can cause my. Uh, sorry, I, I, let me not get into technical meta commentary, but uh, I'm messing with some some settings on the channel that will improve video quality and also reduce my post processing um, work and. What you just saw is one of the reasons that I've used the settings I've been using. That long pause that happens during certain loading screens in the long dark. And by the way, sprinting also increases the detection radius in the same way that crouching decreases it. I don't know if this has changed in a recent patch because I don't remember the last time I was detected the moment I started sprinting, but um, I'm still fairly certain it works the same way. So. If you are outside of a wolf's detection, detection range, but close enough to it, you can actually start sprinting and the wolf will aggro and come straight for you. Aggro, by the way, if you're a more casual gamer, it's a just a gaming term for luring the attention of a computer-controlled entity. So we got a couple of fire logs there. That's nice, but they're also going to be super heavy. But that's actually, it's nice that I found all of this fire starting stuff because that'll be really, really handy for the fishing we're about to do. And I'll show you why. I'm excited about this. All right, we've got one more. Yeah, we've got one more cabin to look through. Actually, we have two more. There's one on the far side, but in this group, there's one more. The only thing that stinks right now is that this fog is going to make it a little bit difficult to navigate past the wolves safely. I'm going to have to be very careful so as not to piss off the wolves. Beef jerky, tomato soup, orange soda. So we're finding lots of items now that I'm scavenging the world a little bit more. Again, a Voyager playthrough, you should have plenty of stuff to carry around. And I definitely, we might spend the beginning of the next episode doing some inventory management because now we're well above carrying capacity. And so we have to talk, we have to have that first conversation about what do you do once you have hit capacity? How do you really make decisions about what you drop and what you keep? Hope nobody needs this anymore. Finally! All right, so we got some mittens, some pretty good mittens. Well, not good condition, but fleece mittens are, are nice. And I failed my first repair try. Let's try again. All right, 90%, that's much better. And we're out of cloth, so I'll have to get some more cloth if I want to do more repairing. By the way, remember that you can check your skill progress here on this screen. So I've been doing some mending. My skill progress is going up. Cooking, we talked about that earlier. See, this represents, this screen right here represents what cooking might eventually look like in the long dark. Really cool stuff. If you want to just look at that again and savor it, I understand. How cool would that be to actually be able to set stuff out in the stove and, and really use it? Anyway. Let's, um, let's do some eating. Beef jerky is salty, so as you can see, it's lowering my thirst at the same time that I'm eating. I'm also going to sort by weight here, and I'm going to go ahead and eat this tomato soup. I could heat this if I needed to, if I needed it to be a warmer item. We talked about that earlier as well. Higher levels of cooking skill actually raise the cooking, or the uh, caloric value of the item that you're eating, too. That's quite nice. So it's always good if I haven't mentioned this, uh, or actually, even if I have mentioned it, I'll say it again. When you're eating, sort your stuff by weight. Try and eat your biggest items first, unless you have a reason not to eat some of the heaviest items just yet. Trust me, it just helps so much. Okay, so there might be some more wolf dancing here, but I'm not going to let a wolf distract me from fishing again. We're going to scavenge that last cabin, which is over here. Going to look for some cattails along the way. So I'm encumbered right now. My movement speed is slowed down. My sprinting speed is slowed down. It, it is possible to reach a point of encumbrance where you can't even sprint. I'm not at that point. This fog is really hiding the local wildlife from me. Ooh, I haven't shown stone throwing yet, have I? If I do see a wolf... You can use these to distract wolves, by the way, which I'll talk about when I do a more concentrated stone-throwing 
tutorial episode. This is a newer mechanic that they added in the long dark that didn't exist in previous versions. Now, there is something fairly significant about this particular spot, but actually no, there's not. Not this time, because if the guy were here, if what I was looking for were here, there'd be crows above. So never mind, I won't tell you what I'm referencing there. You'll just have to find out. Let's poke our heads in here, and then we're going to do some fishing. I am glad that I found the gloves. I'm kind of hoping I find a lantern soon, but I could use this. there should be one somewhere. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't matter what layer I put these on because they don't have wind protection. So let's just put the second pair of socks on. Very nice. Check the trunk. Newsprint. Newsprint. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to begin the next episode with some notes on inventory management. I wonder if there was a medical cabinet in one of those previous cabinets, uh, previous places that I visited and I forgot to search it. Because that's right there. And this is the same layout as another cabinet I've already been in this episode. So let me know in the comments. I'm not going to go back and look, but if I, if I skipped a medical cabinet, I'll go back and take a peek at some point. Okay, let's go fishing. All this gear is slowing me down. Yeah, it is, Mark. It is slowing you down. So let's, uh, let's... <laughs> <laughs> This is the one time I will actually confuse these voice actors because both Mark Muir of Commander Shepard fame and David Hayter of Metal Gear Solid fame have uh, have contributed to the long dark. David Hayter plays Jeremiah, who is very lovingly included in the thumbnail. And I will go ahead and say this anyway, just because it makes me laugh every time Mark Muir pulls a more gruff voice. It just makes me think every time of Metal Gear. Just It just makes me want to exclaim it. Even when I'm not commentating on YouTube. <laughs> Otacon, what the hell's going on? Ah, oh, man. Anyway, sorry. Tangent. I am waiting for a fishing hut to emerge from the fog. There we go. There could also be a, a wolf emerging from the fog if I'm not careful. So, let me actually... I just hit the two key to pull up my projectile weaponry. This might also eventually include guns, but for now it just includes rocks that I can throw. Bit of a downgrade from guns but I just want to have these ready in case I need to hit a wolf in the face, which I probably won't because I suck at throwing rocks. Energy bar, that's nice. Newsprint. Oh, yay, finally. So here's a hunting knife. Hunting knives are good for skinning things as well as stabbing things that are attacking you and, and um, opening things when you don't have a can opener like we already talked about. All right, so there's some scrap metal. There's another flare. Let's check the cupboard. All right, there could occasionally be something under the potbelly stove. All right, we're warm enough at the moment with the clothing I've got on. It feels like 35 degrees, so I don't need to have a fire started yet. But actually still, I'm going to go ahead and start one. It's generally a good idea if you're going to be fishing for a good while. It's generally a good idea to go ahead and start a fire before you sit down. We're going to use wood matches, this book, and this accelerant. I'm not going to worry about taking the charcoal because I'm already over encumbered and we'll worry about that a little bit later on. <laughs> Looks like it worked. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now I can't stop. All right. So cedar firewood, let's add this stuff in the fur firewood as well. Actually, yeah, let's just, and we'll even pile on the uh, fire log so we can have a nice long fishing session. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to start the fire is that when you fish, you've got to make sure that your fishing hole doesn't freeze back over. So having a nice source of heat nearby that's putting out ridiculous amounts of heat. I mean, look, it feels like almost 80 degrees now. The, the air is still getting hotter. Holy crap, 84 degrees. Yep. So we're fine now. We've just warmed this place very well. Some of these fishing huts, by the way, do have a door, so you can really close yourself off from the elements. And even in a blizzard, if you had the wood that you needed for a fire, you can sit down. And if you had a, a bedroll, you could rest right here, and you could just live in a fishing hut really indefinitely, as long as you had what you needed to fish. And you had, you know, backup food and stuff like that. You could live for a long time. So we've got to break through the ice. We just found a hunting knife, so we can use that. Um, let's actually go ahead and put, no, no, let's use the pry bar. I don't want to use our blade on the ice. That'll reduce the condition on the knife. So notice it's taking a good amount of time, a couple hours here, to break through this ice. Still foggy. Ice fishing hole cleared. We have five hours left on the fire. 
So what I'm going to do, so I just had to make a note of something really quickly there. It'll tell you just like with when resting, how many hours or how many calories you're going to burn. Let's go ahead and just fish for four. Well, hang on. No, we can do better than that. we got an energy bar. Let's eat that energy bar. And that'll give us lots more time that we can fish. I do only have five hours to go though. So maybe four is a good idea. Or maybe I can put more on the fire and do it that way. Each stick adds about eight minutes right now. Yeah, let's just do four, I suppose. Hours to fish. Four. Start fishing. All right, we got a lake white fish. So this, it just pops up, and you, you saw my fishing skill increase there. You get a uh, caloric value indication, how heavy the fish is, and the condition of the fish. Obviously, it's a fresh fish, because we just caught it. It's alive and well. Okay, another lake, wait, lake white fish. Yes, the caloric value and weight of each fish will change, so it's possible to catch a... What happened there? Did I lose my fishing tackle? Hang on. No. I thought I was fishing for a longer period of time. Sometimes the hours don't sync up in quite the same way. But yes, the, the, the caloric value of a fish can vary depending on what you catch. Okay, weather's changing. Hey, there we go. See what I mean? Look at the caloric. Look at that. 1,247 calories for this fish. Amazing. I can barely walk with this much gear. We're also really weighing ourselves down because that's a heavy fish. All right. Weather's a little crappy. We've got an hour left on our fire. I'm going to go ahead and just throw this other fire log on there because I want to cook this meat. We're going to get some cooking skill out of this. Now, another thing I want to show you about fish that's very useful. Look up here. Boom. Right there. Every time you cook fish, that's a, a huge tip. If you're running low on lantern fuel, but you don't have any left from natural sources, you've scavenged all of it, or you just haven't found any more and you really need some, cook some fish. You can use the oil to burn in your lantern. And again, we don't have a lantern yet, but very handy to know that, isn't it? <laughs> Now, there is a downside to what I'm doing right now, which is that I'm going to have a lot of meat on me, which is going to slow me down, and it's going to attract the attention of nearby predators, which is not good. In case you're wondering, that's generally not good. I'm going to eat the heaviest fish first because, oh my god, holy crap. That's just amazing. And then I'm going to drink this water. And I can probably get away with eating another fish. Let's see. Again, going for the heaviest first. This is probably the best fed we've been for the entire series. It's amazing. Let's go ahead and melt a little bit more snow. Again, taking advantage of the entire length of time we have for this fire. And now I just need to do a little bit of resting. What I'm hoping is I want to try and make it back to the cabin that I was in before I came here. And this will, that'll conclude this episode. So that's fishing, that's cooking fish. And obviously it's a really, really great way. This has been one of the first lessons really in getting food from animals, um, in this case, from beneath the ice. As we call it on the channel, this, this term uh, caught on quickly with you guys, and I love it, uh, as we affectionately and highly sarcastically on the channel call it um, ice deer fishing. By the way, you can grab a torch from a fire in a situation like this if you know you're going to be walking a farther distance. And you can... I'm being very wary about the possibility of wolves. You can grab a torch and it will raise the air temperature around you. So it will actually be a little bit, a little bit, um, a little bit warmer, you know, uh, because you're holding a torch. It, same with the lantern. When you have the, a torch or a lantern lit and you're holding it up, it's actually a little bit warmer thanks to that. But anyway, I'm also being kind of cautious right now because you can see on the screen. I, well, here's a pro tip to close the episode on. The game is not showing a scent indicator in the upper middle of the screen. There are three scent bars that can pop up. We haven't talked about that yet. We definitely will again before the series is over. It doesn't show that I'm giving one off, but believe me, with this meat that I'm carrying, I am. 
it's weird. The system is not completely accurate in terms of whether you are giving off a scent or not. You can still give off a very small scent that will attract the attention of wolves. And what's very dangerous about attracting the attention of predators, or, or bears for that matter, what's dangerous about attracting the attention of predators with meat is that they will silent stalk you. If a wolf is aggro just by your presence, they'll bark at you. But if they smell meat, they will they go into hunting mode. They they're not aggravated. They smell a kill and they want to they want to sneak up on it. Like and it's it's a different mechanic. So you have to be very, very careful because when you're carrying around meat, you might not hear the wolf coming. And that's that's kind of an important uh, thing to know, right? So next episode, we're going to talk about some inventory management because uh, <laughs> we're 20 pounds over encumbered when our rest will be less than that. But still, we're very, very badly encumbered. And we need to talk about kind of how to make those decisions and different ways that you can, you know, manage your inventory based on some comments that I've gotten in the past um, and just on general knowledge of my play style. Some people are going to say or at least think I'm not the best inventory manager in the world. A lot of, I'm a bit of a pack rat when it comes to my inventory, but that, that we'll talk more about that in the next episode. I just want to go ahead and establish that caveat. There's always different play styles and different examples to learn from. Read the comments for different suggestions and different points of view from mine. Um, I will definitely spend some time talking about how you make those decisions that reduce what you're carrying while not sacrificing the stuff that you need to have on you in the beginning of the next episode. And um, I definitely know how to make those decisions. I just don't always make them. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.